and we're off again and the weather is a hell of a lot nicer although we have had a slight change of heart in terms of how we're going to go through Sweden I originally said that we were going to take like eight days to get through the country but we've seen the roads and um, they're quite easy so they're fast moving we're going to uh, speed it up a little bit today we're planning on doing 300 kilometers and we're planning on doing that for the next three days before we reach Denmark which is where basically the journey home starts I feel like we're getting to that point in the trip where you know homes nearing closer so we're starting to sort of get that in our head a little bit more i'm starting to think more about logistics of when we get home and editing these videos and work like that but i also know that it's important still to enjoy this final bit of trail that we've got we'll see how it goes today obviously we didn't do any research so that's why we're now changing our plans because we've seen what the roads are like but I, I quite enjoy having a jump packed day especially when the weather's nice so I feel like we've really got to make the most of it Riding for so long also gives you so much time to think and also talk between each other. For better or for worse, the plan that we just went over changes again today. When we get to camp later on, we'll explain what our new plan is and why we changed it so quickly. Just jumping in to talk about today's sponsor, which is Y Food, and to let you in behind the curtain, we are currently getting these two bikes ready for our next trip. So we've just been go, 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 and it couldn't come at a more perfect time to mention Y Food as we're currently having them for lunch. When we have days like this, Mitch is prone to just not having any lunch whatsoever. And then if we do end up stopping for lunch, once we're both really hungry, it'll be something like fast food or like a chippy or something, which is not good. So just having wire food with us today is honestly the perfect solution because it's not a diet or protein shake, it's a meal replacement drink, which means we're gonna be satiated and I'm not gonna get hungry doing all these jobs. So just having wire food on hand is great because Mitch doesn't have to stop working, but he's still getting 26 vitamins and minerals and a full meal within that bottle. There's loads of great flavors to choose from. My personal favorite is the cold brew coffee flavor. It's high in protein, gluten-free, lactose-free, and there's no added sugar. If you wanna give Y Food a try for yourself, you can use the code that's coming up on the screen now or go to the link in our description, which will get you 10% off your first purchase. So do take advantage, try it out, and let us know what you think. What's up? I've got a mystery vault. I don't know where it's come from. Right, we'll get back to the bike jobs and we'll go back to the video. We just stopped to water the plants and this is the first time I've ever seen wild strawberries. They look mental, they've got like, they're not got white seeds, they're red, unless they go white when they ripen. But all of these little bushes have got strawberries on and then this one here as well, I might be wrong, but they also look like cranberries and then they look like bluebells. You know, I'm pretty sure I read that Sweden was really good for foraging. Might be. On a, a couple of the shelters, or on Park for Night, one of the two people were saying that it's really good for like wild blueberries and strawberries and stuff. If you're in the right area. I've seen a few people at the side of the road with a little basket, so that's obviously what they must be doing. I didn't realise that they could grow in such conditions like this. <laughs> yeah. I thought like they had to be, I don't know, in a better bit of land than side of the road but I was wrong <laughs> oh my god I think Mitch's life just flashed before my eyes Jesus I thought you were gone a, a little baby deer just bolted in front of Mitch just <laughs> there was a sign just that I was gonna say there was a sign saying look out for cats <laughs> <laughs> but not, not freaking deer. Oh my god. It was lying down in the grass inside here, so I didn't see it at all. And genuinely, it just jumped out, jumped straight in front of me. I just slammed all fours on. I think I need a baby wipe off. <laughs> that was horrible. There wasn't even enough time to take that in at all. See, and we've had a couple of questions on why 
well me in particular, I think Morgan as well, I can't really see her when she's behind me, but we stand up so much when we're riding on stuff that's like this, and you just get such a better field of view and stuff like that. I wasn't stood up at that time then, but if I was, I would have had a much better chance of seeing that deer lying down there. Yeah, definitely. I feel like it's so much safer than being stood up on roads like this. As we were cruising our way down the country today, we saw quite a few people riding on the TET, but we were keeping our eye out for one in particular. Martha, is this your... Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't feel so stupid now. <laughs> <laughs> nice one mate, see you later. Safe trip, see ya. <laughs> that was nice. That was so nice. So I had a message on Instagram last night um, from Steph who is part of the Wandering Honda on YouTube. Her and her husband Simon usually travel both on their CRFs as well and it was just Simon on this trip and she told us to look out for him because we thought we might be crossing paths because of us going south and him going north and we did. It was so, it was so good. We sort of caught eye and then I looked in my rear view to see if it was an English number plate and it was and then we were able to spin back and have a good little catch up picking his brain about a few of the sections as well that we've got to come um so yeah it's really nice to meet you and hopefully we'll meet steph at some point as well when we're back in the uk oh also actually are you okay yeah i'm trying to i lost my phone overheated so i've lost where we're going to oh no it hasn't oh it's all right we've got longer than i thought we've got 80 kilometers until we get lunch okay this is where we decided to change our course and find somewhere to spend the night. Well, it feels like it's been a long time since we've spoken to you today, but there's a reason for that, which we'll get onto because a lot of things have changed. But I just wanted to quickly show you where we've parked up for the night because this is, this is great. We're completely within the forest here. If Mitch wasn't making a noise, there's no noise. We've got some firewood here lots of firewood and then a shelter here a bin a pit and then we've literally just pulled up and mitch is already starting on the fire because we bought some sausages and hot dog rolls to have for tea tonight and we didn't know we were going to have a fire and we didn't know that there was going to be a grill either so it means that we're going to be able to put the sausages on the grill which i'm very excited about because we saw in finland especially like so many people just putting the sausages on the fire and we never did it because we always planned for like pasta or something but tonight we've actually planned for it without planning for it and i'm so excited that we're going to be able to do that and yeah so we'll we'll get set up and then we'll have a little bit more of a chat once mitch has got the fire started I tell you what, it's all systems go at camp right now <laughs> with this fire. Mitch is putting the sausages on. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's too hot, but I, I like, I'm hungry. So, we've got them all sizzling on there. We've got some onions in the saucepan behind Mitch. And then, do you want to show what we picked up as well? Oh, the potatoes? Yeah. A bag of pus. <laughs> it's disgusting. It says it's potato gratin, whatever that is. It's like cheesy potatoes. I bet it tastes really nice. It just looks a bit manky. It looks like it's been pulled out of someone's back. Oh, yeah. We saw it in there for, I think it was just over a pound it came in at. And that was like the, the start of us trying to figure out what we were going to have for dinner tonight. We kind of rogue to have it with hot dogs it's potatoes sort of like chips it's fine um, and we had to google if you could do it on the stove or not and general consensus was you could do it in the microwave so we thought you can do it on a stove it doesn't say that on the packaging but it should be good and then i'm just gonna put up our chairs because it's a bit far away from the fire this is a great great little spot it's really quiet as well the onions look good. 
Look at the size of these hot dog rolls. <laughs> They're so small. That's even smaller than a, like a finger. I think they look pretty average sized. <laughs> oh, like they, at least they fit in our little bowls. Do you have any onions on the bottom or on the top? Uh, whatever works best. Probably on the bottom, isn't it? Yeah, maybe to flatten them if you can get a onion in there. Oh, this does look good. Shabba labba that's hot. Ah! <laughs> it's a health and safety nightmare. Ah! There you go, bon appetit. Thank you. <laughs> kind of looks like a hot dog emoji. I've just had to wash my wiener. Blue Martha went to grab one, dropped it in the fire. So I got it out of the fire because she said, oh, I'll just have one less hot dog. But now if I get it out, I get one more hot dog. <laughs> and then I got it out and then it dropped on the floor. So I've had to wash it with some water. Make sure you remember which one that was. This one. Okay. Okay, so we're going to quickly go over to this, the decision that we made today. Because it's nothing like crazy, but it's, uh, it's changing what we're doing now. <laughs> Why are you making it like that? Basically, we've decided that we are going to go home, basically. Well, when you put it like that, it sounds really dramatic. Yeah, the reason, <laughs> the reason is because we're at this stage of the trip now where this needed to completely blow our mind for us to warrant putting in how much time it is to do the TET rather than just a ride through Sweden. And the roads are basically, I was expecting more of a bit of an adventure, a bit more exploring, but the roads, like they're beautiful and you get to see Sweden, yeah. but they're, they're basically just public roads that are made of gravel. Yeah, so. like it kind of reminds me of like the first couple of days of when we were in Finland, where you're still just going through loads of houses and villages before you get to like anything remote. But because we're going south, it's just gonna carry on. Yeah. Getting like that. So basically, we're at the point now where we're we're pretty tired. We're we're starting to wake, um, and we're quite we're ready to get home really. So we've made the decision. We rode three hours on the highway today to get closer towards Denmark, which is where we're we're heading for now. So we're going to be crossing over to Denmark tomorrow morning. It feels bittersweet that this is going to actually be our last camp spot like this yeah because this is the this is the part that we love we yeah. love being outside we love being in nature and the off-roading just wasn't really giving that to us no it's... and like it's it's been over four weeks we're over the time that we originally set out it's nearly been five so you know it, we're not we're not cutting it short the trip by any means but it's time to cut but it but it is time to cut it like we, we've yeah. definitely burnt ourselves out a little bit but in the best possible way but yeah, so, but... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so not to make it dramatic or anything we, we're gonna have a hot chocolate try and get a good night's sleep because we've still got a few hours to get to denmark tomorrow morning and um yeah there's a couple more things that we're going to be doing before we get back home so we'll obviously record that and then yeah we'll uh, see you in the morning <laughs> Oh, slow. We're up and packing up nice and early this morning, getting coffee down us and having some breakfast because we're actually going to be meeting my friend today, which who's been on the channel before actually, which is that cool. I was watching the video last night of when we were in Portugal and I was just pissing myself at the paddleboard scene and I was just crying with laughter. But yeah, anyway, he lives in Denmark, so what we're going to do for the next couple of days is spend some time with him and uh, try and have a bit of a chill out before our mammoth journey back home. So we're going to meet him in Malmo today and we're also going to do a really, what we would say, a really important thing that we've got to do while we're in Sweden, which we're looking forward to. So that's us all packed away for our final campsite of the trip, which is uh, it's quite sad actually. It's rather monumental. I feel like I'm really in my, my thoughts and feels this morning. You know how I, I like to think things. And just, <laughs> just reminiscing on like the first day and that feels like forever ago, but also I remember it so well. 
and it was so good and this whole trip as well has just been full of so many amazing memories that we've had yeah we're we're having a chat while we're having a coffee this morning because we we reminisce a lot me and martha do way way too much about stuff that we've like has happened in the past and we were saying i wonder what we'll reminisce on on this trip because you don't know what you talk about until years down the line so uh yeah it's it's interesting so yeah and now it's time really to start heading home and off we go this actually on the way up here it was probably one of the, the most technical bits of off-road section we've seen in sweden and that was just to get to the campsite this what we're riding now is more what i was expecting the tt to be like we've got three hours and three minutes until we reach malmo Ooh. There we go, thumbs over. The start of the long hours ahead had begun where we'll be pushing everything these little bikes had, trying to keep up with the flow of traffic and then wriggling around every five minutes to try and ease the bum ache. Luckily, this ride to Malmo was short in comparison to what we had come in and thankfully there was something great waiting for us at the end of this journey. Honestly, all the Swedish people will probably hate us for like saying this and saying that this is <laughs> our idea of a Swedish culinary meal, which you can get in the UK, but we thought we can't come to the home of IKEA and not try it from the source. And my mate Andreas should be here in the car park somewhere. Oh. I think he's dead. He's dead? Oh. <laughs> oh. Where are you going? I'm going to park here. Ready? Yeah, yeah. We're on the move. I feel sick after that. <laughs> we got way too excited about the food and ate very quickly. I'm leading the charge until we get over the bridge towards Copenhagen because James hasn't got any GPS on his bike. So, uh, yeah. But the bridge over to Denmark is meant to be pretty cool. I've seen some photos of it. I don't know if you're going to be able to get the full extent of how cool it is from riding on it. But um, if you don't, I'll put some footage of what it looks like because it is sick. Last exit in Sweden, into Denmark we go. Cord cash, cord. Go in this one. Is in drivers behind you? Yeah. Oh, he's coming in front. See if he can work his Danish charm. Yeah, there's no one in there though. I don't know how he's going to pay for all three at once. We're good. Me go? Oh, I wait. Assistance is on its way. <laughs> what was that? We've got to wait. The assistance is on its way. It, the the barrier is not going down. Well, it looks like I'm going to be doing the bridge by myself. Hopefully, they can sort that out because I've got the credit card on me. <laughs> so half is probably stranded in Sweden. I go. Yeah. I've lost connection with Mitch, I can't just stop. Jeez, look at the size of this. I've left Andreas behind. 
not quite sure. Now I'm just on the hook for Mitch. I, I don't know. I, I hope he's sorted it for us. If he has, then he's an absolute legend because that was going to cost us quite a bit of money. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Mitch isn't going to be stopping here, is he? Awesome. Woohoo! Just riding on my own <laughs> into Denmark. Wow, that's so cool. And then it's just going to disappear. It just disappears into the water. Hopefully, Andreas will catch it. Oh, yeah, he has. He's caught up with me. Oh, it's very windy up here. Woohoo! Oh, look, there's a sign. And we're into Den Denmark. Oh, this is so cool. See how there's just that bit of land there? I think I'm right in that that land just ends, which it looks like it does, and then that's when you go in the sea. They're just like, ah, oh, can't be bothered to make any more roads. I'm pretty sure I keep picking up Mitch. I could just lie here whilst voice so she must be happy to open. You know the thing that I find crazy is that this could be someone's daily commute. And I mean, it most likely is. Andrea said that people do work in Melmo, which I find crazy because you're just skipping into another country each day. I used to just go down the M6. It's not as exciting, is it? I can hear her talking about the M6. I'm up here boring. Oh, hi, where are you? <laughs> I've just got into the tunnel. Oh, so have I. Oh, you must be catching up then. Yeah, um, can you see a caravan? Oh, you, can you hear Andreas? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hey Mitch, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, Matt's really quiet. <laughs> Matt's really quiet compared to Andreas's. I just tried to rev. Can you hear me? Can you see me? No. Turn your high beams on. Oh yeah, I can see ya. Born to be wild. <laughs> 130 on here. And off we convoyed to Andreas's house for a couple of days before our 1500 kilometre journey back home to where it all began. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.